seated. Diane, do you have children's church this morning? I do. All Let's right. have all the children come on down. Have a seat right up here on the steps. There'll be no Bible buddies this morning, okay? Let's see. I'm no going to see buddies. which step feels the best this morning. This one, this one, this one, or this one. This one, this one feels the best. Can you come sit on this one, please? No, this is the one you need today, right here. Yeah. We have two children, but we are all children of the Lord, aren't we? So maybe, maybe we have something to hear from the Lord today. For all his children. <laughs> Why are you laughing? She's so funny. What? Why are you so cheery today? I have to tell you, I am so happy today. <laughs> Do you know why I'm happy today? No. Because I'm here in God's house. And you know what else? Because I'm out of my house. Because you know what? It snowed and then it sleeted and it rained and it kept me in the house. Did it keep you in the house or did you go out and play in the snow? Did you go out and play in the snow? Huh? Yeah. You did? But you know what? When you get kind of you get kind of old like me, it's dangerous to be out in the ice. Because if I fall, I will break. If you fall, you probably bounce. <laughs> but that's why I am happy, Dave. I am happy, happy. Are you happy? I am just so thrilled to be here. You know, it is just so good to be in the church in the house of the Lord and be with my brothers and sisters in Christ. There's Howard, there's Paul, and, and Sam, and Alan. It's just so good to see all my brothers here this morning. I'm just so pleased to be here and think of all our brothers and sisters that couldn't be here this morning and what they might be going through. Aren't you glad you're out? Yeah. Got to go to church and see all your friends this morning? Isn't it great? Praise the Lord. Huh? Praise the Lord. Blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really happy. You know why I'm happy? Story. Uh, Miss Diane and I were in China. Yeah, that's very far away. You know, how, oh, my name is Mr. Carl. You know how far China is from here? About 7,000 miles. And if you drove a car, 60 miles per hour, it would take you five days if you didn't stop. <laughs> yeah, okay, so it's really far away, and you know what we were doing? We were teachers in China, and it was so, we were so uh, happy to teach our beautiful children. We taught children like you, but they were different, and we loved, we loved teaching. And then um, uh, last summer, Miss Diane and I were in, in China, and I asked her to marry me. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and she said yes. <laughs> Did that make you happy? That made me happy. But, but you know, not yet. So, Miss Diane left China in September. Okay, you listening? Miss Diane left in September, and then I, came, I followed her from China. And I came home and spent Christmas with her. We were so happy. But you know what? I want to tell you something more. I want to talk about, really quick, I want to talk about how God takes care of us. Yeah, he does. You know, before I left China, I didn't have a place to stay. I didn't have a car. I had very little money. And I didn't have a job. But you know what? God is taking care of us. Diane's parents gave her a car. And a friend gave me a car. Yeah. Diane's staying with her parents, so her, pa so her parents are taking care of her, and I'm staying with a friend. Yeah. 
And maybe this week I will find out about a job. Yeah. And so that I can make some money and we can t I can take care of Miss Diane. Isn't that exciting? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's so exciting. I know. So I'm very, very happy. So everybody's happy about something. But most of all, we can be happy because the Lord is with us. And the Lord is the one who gave my mom joy to be able to leave home. The Lord is the one who gave my dad joy in being with his brothers and sisters in church. And the Lord is the one who gave Mr. Carl joy um, because he has everything he needs in his life. So we're going to learn a song. Do you like singing? Okay. All right. I will sing the first part. Will you sing after me? Maybe everybody can sing with us. Okay? You want to sit down? You can sit down. No. But you can hold my hand. No. Okay. Can you sing with me? Okay. James, come down here. Thank you. Okay. We're going to sing together. Ready? Because here's the first line. Here's the first line. It goes. Cheer up, ye saints of God, there's nothing to worry about. Okay, let's try that. Let's try that, ready? Right? Cheer up, ye saints of God, there's nothing to worry about. Let's do it one more time. Cheer up, ye saints of God, there's nothing to worry about. Okay, the next part is nothing to make you feel afraid, nothing to make you doubt. Ready? Nothing to make you feel afraid, nothing to make you doubt. Okay, let's do the first two lines now. Cheer up, you saints of God, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing to make you feel afraid, nothing to make you doubt. Okay, here's the next part. Remember Jesus never fails. That's right. You got it! <laughs> so why not trust him and shout? So why not trust him and shout? Let's try. Remember. What? Remember Jesus never fails. Ready? Remember Jesus never fails. So why not trust him and shout? Good. Shout! You'll be sorry you worried at all tomorrow morning. Listen. Listen to this. You'll be sorry you worried at all tomorrow morning. Ready? You'll be sorry you worried at all tomorrow morning. Okay, let's sing the whole thing. This part. Come down one step. Just one. Okay, ready? Let's stay up there. Stay up there. Okay, we're gonna do the the whole song. Ready? Cheer up, you saints of God, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing to make you feel afraid, nothing to make you doubt. Remember, Jesus never fails, so why not trust in the shot? You'll be sorry you're worried at all tomorrow morning. Irish song. Okay? So we're going to pretend we're in Ireland. So on the beginning, what do we do on the beginning? What do we do with our what do we do with our body? Do we kind of jump on that part? Or kind of like this? Okay, here we go. Cheer up, you saints of God, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing to make you feel afraid, nothing to make you doubt. Remember Jesus never fails, so why not trust him and show? Sorry you worried at all tomorrow morning. Okay, now we've got our kilts on, and we're going to kick like this. Right? Kick. Ready? Go. Cheer up, you saints of God, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing to make you feel afraid, nothing to make you feel afraid. kick? Remember Jesus never fails, so why not trust him and show? Who feels like doing it with us? <laughs> Anybody else? You can stand up and do it too. <laughs> okay. 
Cheer up, you think so called, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing to make you feel afraid, nothing to make you do. Remember, Jesus never failed, so why not trust him? Sure, you'll be sorry you worried at all. Thank you. Okay, we're going to do a quiz now. It's a quiz. Okay, sit down for the quiz. What does the song say to do? What does the song say to do? It says, cheer up, ye saints of who? Remember, Jesus never. So why not trust him and shout? You'll be sorry you at all tomorrow morning. Yay! Good job. Thank you, everybody. It's time to pray. You guys are special. Let's pray now. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the fun song. Thank you for the two boys and all of us children that belong to you. We pray that you will help the truth to stick in our minds. That nothing, nothing is too difficult for you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, walk please. Walk please. Let's walk. Well, good morning. morning. Boy, am I glad to see you this morning. (laughs) And I'm glad I'm here this morning. These last two weeks have really been long weeks. Week before last, I had to stay home with Bob and Carol. Couldn't get out of the house unless somebody come by and sit with her while I could run school. And then uh, got to come last uh, Wednesday night, and then Sunday morning, and then Wednesday night, and then the snow hit. And been in all week. And I'm just glad to be anywhere right now, aren't you? (laughs) But I'm especially glad to be at church today. I know we're down in numbers today. We got a lot of people didn't really need to get out today, but I'm glad that you're here today. Do we have a labor of love video? We don't have a labor of love. Do we have a picture? Anybody recognize that young lady? That is Christine Mercer. Christine, stand up. Christine, stand up. Christine will be 85 years old tomorrow. So happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. And uh, Brandon and Tamara, stand up. Brandon Hatcher, Tamara Arden are engaged. And going to be married. So congratulations to them. When's the wedding? May 14th, 2016. Next Sunday. Is that what you said? Uh, well, congratulations. Let me ask you this morning to, to pray for Gary and Kim Massey and their family. Uh, Kim called me this morning and Gary's son, Trevor, 28 years old. Uh, passed away last night, found him dead last night. So remember that family in a very, very special way. And also remember Donna Burns and Cecil, uh, Donna's mother, Lovell, is that right? Lovell McCormick passed away up in, in, in Illinois. So remember that family. We still got so, so many on our prayer list. In the way of announcements, Wednesday night supper will be this Wednesday night. Uh, if it doesn't snow or sleet or come in ice storms before Wednesday night. Please sign up if you're coming. Remember all the announcements in the bulletin about the upcoming youth events, the senior (coughs) adult trip. Remember each and every one of those and uh, take advantage of all that you can. Any other announcements this morning? Any other announcements? Well, it is so good to see you this morning. We do have a few guests with us. I want to ask our church family to stand. If you're a guest, just stay seated. We can see who you are and where you are. 
come and welcome you to church this morning, okay? <laughs> this morning, would you stand and let's sing it together. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been watching the fountain. It's by His blood. Joy is for Jesus as we travel this time. For a part of the family, the family of God. be seated. We do have one more. Eddie, would you stand back up? Come right over here. You thought you'd get out of this. I thought I'd sneak by. Our pastor's birthday was yesterday. 66 years old. So he stood probably about as long as he can. So we'll have him go sit back down and we'll sing right quick. Okay, for him and Christine. Ready? Happy birthday to you Happy birthday to you Happy birthday God bless you Happy birthday to you Amen
shout of acclamation to take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow with humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then change my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then change my soul to be in your house today. Thank you for each one who could make it out today. 
be with those who are at home. And Father, we've had so many without power this week, some with all week, uh, without power all week. We've had many, many sick. Uh, I pray for little Abby today. Pray for Ronnie as he gets ready to take his heart cath and just other needs that we have in our church. Clista, as she goes back to Atlanta tomorrow. Father, we just thank you that we serve a great big God who can hear and answer every prayer. Thank you for this opportunity to give our tithes and offerings. Bless the gift and the giver today. In Jesus' name we pray. Our special music this morning, uh, Grace was going to sing for us, and she's ended up sick, so she's going to sing next Sunday morning for us, we, so let's pray for her that, that she gets better. And we have a visitor with us uh, today, I noticed she's the only one that wasn't standing, so Linda, pardon, if you will come, you'll probably never come back. We're going to ask her to sing, okay? Okay. Uh, it's what she gets for coming and visiting with us this morning. Uh, she's going to come and sing. I know a lot of you probably know her. Uh, this is uh, Dolly Pardon's better sister. No, uh, it's not. But y'all pray as she sings for us. It is good to worship with you today, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Who am I? 
we'll never understand it and we'll never be able to repay him. The answer I, I may never know. Church didn't have church this morning, but I'm glad that God sent her our way this morning. Linda and Frida and Frida's mama used to sing uh, together, and uh, Linda can sing a mean wind, the wind beneath my wings. Is that what the name of it is? If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And uh, the message this morning, the message tonight, both going to be on spiritual gifts. Next Sunday morning, we're going to be, our uh, Labor of Love committee is going to come together, and we're going to have a, a, a time of, of, of a commitment service to using our gifts for the glory of God. And too many people just look at themselves as just ordinary. Truth of the matter is, every one of us are just ordinary. We're just ordinary clay pots. Bible says we're just ordinary earthen vessels. But it's what God puts in those earthen vessels that can make us extraordinary for Him. Look with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Do you hear that? We're just plain old earthen vessels that God has put something great inside of. And he's put that inside of us so that the world may know that he is God and not us ourselves. Father, thank you for the reading of your word today. Thank you, Father, that we're just earthen vessels, just old ordinary clay pots that God fills with his power and his spirit and his love and makes us something extraordinary extraordinary for him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to see and understand two things in this sermon this morning. First thing I want us to see is that every single one of us, every child of God has received a gift from God and you and I are responsible for how we use that gift for the good of the church and for the glory of God. Second thing that I want us to see this morning is some very compelling reasons why you and I ought to be using the gifts that God has given us for His glory. And if I can accomplish these two things, then I want to take just a few minutes before we close to, to ask you to prayerfully consider the opportunities of ministry that are found here at Highland Park Baptist Church for you to to use your gifts. First thing I want you to see this morning is that every single Christian, every single child of God has received a gift from God. And now that you have that gift, you received that gift when you were saved, you're responsible to use it to bless the church for the good of the church, but also so that God can get the glory. And this is evident, and we see this both in our own experience and, and we see this in the Word of God. Experience teaches us that every single one of us is different. None of us are the same. And I'm glad that's true, aren't you? I'm glad God made us all different. Folks, if we believe that there is a God who creates everything and sustains everything, then our differences must be due to God. We're made just the way God wanted to make us. And God wants us to use us just the way 
he wants to use us. If our existence and our diversity is due to God's mercy in creation and God's providence, then you and I have a responsibility to th- today to say, God, we just want to thank you for how you made us. We want to thank you, God, that you made me different from everybody else. And God, because we have different personalities, because we have different gifts, because we have different abilities, if we allow God to use us, God can do something amazing in this church. And I've said this before, God's put every one of you in this church at this time for a reason. You have a gift that God wants to be using right now at Highland Park Baptist Church. It may be singing in the choir, may be working with children, may be working in the bus ministry, may be working with uh, with the youth, may be teaching. Uh, You know, there's just all kinds of opportunities that you and I have to use our gifts and abilities. But not only does experience teach us that we're different, But in God's Word, there are at least two passages of Scripture that make this point very, very clearly about we're all different, we're all gifted, and God wants to use us for His glory. The first one is found in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. It says, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now these two verses are a theology of ministry in miniature. And all four parts of my first point that I'm trying to make are in these few verses. And those four parts are this. Every Christian has received a gift. And that gift is some special work of God's grace in your life. And you're responsible to use it. Too many people say, Preacher, I don't have a gift. You've got a gift. And a lot of people that know they have a gift are not motivated to use that gift. We've got people sitting out in the, in, in the pews every Sunday morning that, that have a beautiful voice, and God's given you that voice to lift up praises to Him, but for some reason you don't feel motivated to come up in the choir and use that gift. Folks, we're rep- responsible for using the gifts God's given us. And we're not only responsible for using that gift, We're to use that gift to benefit other people, but most of all, we're to use that gift so that God, God gets the glory. And I don't want you to miss what this text has to say to you this morning. If you're a Christian this morning, there is some special manifestation of God's grace that the Holy Spirit has placed within you that God can use to help other people to benefit the church and to give glory to God. Now this is also seen in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7. It says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Notice that it says, and folks, this is what the Bible says, it says, To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit of the Spirit. It doesn't say to to one person here and one person there. It says the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, every Christian. And I want to emphasize this this morning. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God in your life is not just for preachers. It's not just for evangelists. It's not just for teachers but it is for every single member of the body of Christ. There are no exceptions. You have a gift that God has placed within you, and you're not to squander that gift by not using it. Folks, by His marvelous grace, He's given you a gift this morning. Don't waste it by not being motivated to use that gift. 
You're responsible to use your gift for the good of the church and for the glory of God. And you may know in your head that you have a gift. You may know in your heart that you have a gift. But you just don't feel any motivation today to obey it and use it. <clears throat> you know, this has been a hard week to be motivated to do anything. About all we've done this week is sit around waiting on the power to come on. And when the power's off, I don't know what it is, when the power goes off and it's cold in the house, all you want to do is eat. <laughs> isn't, isn't, that, isn't that true? I bet I've gained 10 pounds this week. And, and the other night the power went off, and the first thing I did as soon as the power went off, I cut the light on. We got a little old light that, that sits there. And, uh, and I, I went over and flipped that light on, got it on, went in another room, lit a candle. And the very next thing I did, I walked in the kitchen, flipped the light switch, <laughs> and went to the refrigerator. I don't know what it is about that kind of weather, but you just don't feel motivated to do anything but eat. Folks, listen. You may know in your head you got a gift from God, but you don't feel any motivation to obey it. You don't feel any motivation to use it. We need to know that God's given us a gift for a reason. God's given us a gift for a purpose, and we're to use that gift in His church for the good of the church and for the glory of God. Second thing I want you to see I want this morning to try to awaken in you a desire to have a ministry that God has given you to know that you have that gift and use it for the good of the church, for the glory of God. And I'm going to give you several reasons this morning why we really ought to use the gifts that God's given us. First of all, Christians who use their gifts are ministers of a new covenant, which means that we experience spiritual power. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4 and 6. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament. Did you get that? Able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Now what does that mean? <clears throat> the Old Covenant in the Old Testament was an agreement that God made with His people at Mount Sinai. And God made an agreement with His people. He said, if you trust me, if you obey me, and if you humbly seek my forgiveness when you sin, he said, I will forgive you, and I will give you life, and I'll give you prosperity. The new covenant is an agreement that God makes with, with his people. He says, if you trust my son Jesus, and if you obey him, and if you seek the forgiveness that he purchased on the cross at Calvary, he said, I'll save you, and I'll forgive you of your sins, and I'll give you eternal life. In the new covenant, after Jesus atoned for our sins once and for all, God saw fit to pour out his spirit to empower us to obedience. You know, I have people... So they tell me all the time they have a trouble being obedient to God. They have trouble being faithful to God. Folks, listen. God has empowered us with His Spirit so that we can be obedient to Him. God has empowered us with His Spirit so we can be faithful to Him. In the New Covenant, the Holy Spirit of God writes the law on our hearts through faith. And it becomes an expression of our own will and our own purpose toward God. The Spirit leads to life, not to death. Now what does that mean for the use of your gift? 
It means that we have this spiritual power by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on our lives to help us not only have obedience in God and not only be faithful to God, but this power of the Holy Spirit empowers us to use our gift. Folks, the gift that you have is through the Holy Spirit, from the Holy Spirit. You use it in the power of the Holy Spirit, and the fruit that it produces is the life of the Holy Spirit. It's all about the Holy Spirit. It's not about you. People say, I can't do this. I can't do that. If you have the gift, you can do it because God gave you the gift and God's going to empower you to do it. I see people all the time who say, I can't teach, but I feel like I have the gift to teach. And then when they feel motivated to use that gift and they begin to pray and prepare a lesson and get before a class, and trust in the Holy Spirit of God to use them as God wants to use them, you know what? They begin to use that gift in a way for the good of the church and for the glory of God, and they realize that it's not about them, but it's all about God. Folks, listen. We're not left alone. We're not left to our own power and our own sufficiency to use the gift that the Holy Spirit has given us. If he's given you a gift, he's going to empower you to use that gift. Carl and Diane were standing up here in Children's Church, and they were talking about going to China 7,000 miles away. James said, oh, my gosh, that's a long way, isn't it? And there are people who say, well, I could, yeah. People say, well, I could, I, could, I could never do that. Well, if God's given you the gift to do it, and you're motivated to do it, you can do things you never thought you could do. I remember when, when uh, I felt the call to go to Africa. I'd always wanted to go on a mission trip. And I'd pray, God, uh, anywhere you want me to go, anything you want me to do. And then the foreign mission board called me and said, we, we, we're gonna, we got an opening. You can go to Africa if you want to. And I thought, well, let me pray about it. And I began to pray about it. And then they called me back in about a week, and they said, are you going to go? And I said, I prayed about it, and I really feel like God wants me to go. And then they said, you're going to be gone 40 days. I thought maybe I was going to be gone a week. I thought I was going to be gone maybe two weeks. And they began to tell me, you know, it's going to take you two or three days to get over there, and two or three days to get back, and you're going to have to get acclimated when you get over there. And acclimated, when you said, said, you need to stay about 40 days. Well, I prayed about it, and I said, okay, Lord, if this is what you want me to do, I'm going to do it. They called me back, and they said, now this was in 1985. They called me back, and they said, it's going to cost $2,600 for your plane ticket. I said, I don't believe I can do that. I was pastoring a little church, New Midway. Church said, we want you to go. But you know if this is God, God wants, we'll help you to go. At that time, we were averaging about 75 in Sunday school, and our budget wasn't that good. But the chairman of the deacons come to me, and he said, Preacher, if God wants you to do it, we're going to find a way to do it. And you know what? Within a week, my ticket was paid for. God takes care of us. Folks, using our gifts when left to the Holy Spirit of God, Holy Spirit will take care of everything. And then the only thing I worried about after that was they told me all the different kinds of snakes. So then I worried about that for six months. But a second motivation for using our spiritual gift is what Jesus meant by that word servanthood. Servanthood is the path for you and I to become great in the eyes of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 5 not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. When Paul used his ministry to minister to the church, Paul said to the church, he said, I am your servant for Jesus' sake. And what he's actually saying is, I'm going to use my gift to minister to you. I'm your servant for Jesus' sake. You're going to get the service. Jesus is going to get the glory. 
And you say, well, what did Paul get? Paul said, I'm going to use my ministry, my gift, for Jesus' sake. You're going to get this service. Jesus is going to get the glory. People say, what did Paul get? Or you might say, what am I going to get? Paul gets the joy. Paul gets the joy of knowing that he's using his gift for the glory of God and he's becoming a better man of faith. Folks, true greatness in the kingdom of God is through servanthood. Years ago, I was preaching on servanthood on Sunday morning. And I said, tonight, I was at Paint Rock. I said, tonight we're going to have a foot washing. And I said, I want everybody to come. We're going to have an old-fashioned foot washing. Well, I had several people I could tell that weren't real excited about washing somebody else's feet. I could see some eyes rolling. That night, everybody come to church, and we had the big bowl of water, and we had the towels, everything sitting up in the front of the church. And I said, we're not really going to have a foot washing tonight. But I said, it's the idea that you would do that for somebody else that's important. I said, God knew before you walked in this door tonight if you would really do that if it came down to it. Folks, using your gift for others is the way God intends for us to use our gift. It's to serve Him. It's through servanthood. The third reason you ought to use your gift is that if you're just feeling ordinary about yourself, if you just feel like you don't have any motivation or reason to use your gift, then you need to understand you're something special. You are an earthen vessel filled with the presence of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 7, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this treasure inside these clay pots. And folks, the power belongs to God. It doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to you. You know, God's concept of ministry is so much different than the concept of that the world has. You know, God says, you are an earthen vessel. You're just an ordinary clay pot. But the world says, no, you've got to be more than that. You've got to be classy. You've got to be some sort of a beautiful container. Folks, the glory of God is found in the human weakness of your and I's lives, clay pots, ordinary vessels. If there's one thing you and I need to learn, it's that God's purpose in my life, your life, is that He gets the glory. He gets the glory. And living our lives and using our gifts should determine how you and I do everything in life. How does God work with you and me? He puts the treasure of his gifts, the treasure of his Holy Spirit. He puts his gospel in earthen vessels like you and me. Folks, I'm going to share something with you. Being ordinary is not a liability to God. Being ordinary is an asset to God. If we really want God to get the glory, it's when we're the weakest that God uses us the most. And one last motive to use your gift is that it makes other people thankful to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 15. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God. Paul says that the use of his gift of apostleship, God says, when I use this gift that God's given me, it's for your sake, but it's for the glory of God. Paul's saying, as the grace that God has given me goes out to you, and then through you to more and more people, more and more people are touched by the power of God, more and more people are touched with 
gratefulness toward God, and that will increase thanksgiving and glory to God. The more people that you and I touch, the more people are going to be thankful to God and giving thanksgiving to God and being saying, God, we want you to get the glory out of our lives too. Folks, there's no greater joy than relying on the Holy Spirit and using the gift that God's given you to serve another person. And then to see that person saved, to see that person grow, to see that person strengthened, and then to see that person filled with thanksgiving and that person being given, using their lives to give glory to God. <clears throat> One last thing. 2 Corinthians 4.17 says, For our light affliction which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Paul's point here is here, is that, and I hear, I hear people say all the time, hang on. People say, I feel like throwing up my hands and quitting. Somebody said, just hang on. Folks, God doesn't want us just to hang on. God wants us to keep on keeping on. Listen, it's going to get better by and by. Don't lose heart. Press on. In spite of everything that's going on in this world, use your gift. Use our gifts for the good of the church and for the glory of God. Every Christian's received a gift from God. Every Christian is responsible to use that gift for the good of the church and the glory of God. And I've shared with you five reasons we should be motivated to be good stewards of God's gift. And if you have a desire to be all that God wants you to be, find your gift, use your gift. And remember, being ordinary is not a liability in the kingdom of God. It can be an asset. If your desire is to glorify God and not yourself as you use that gift. You know, I've seen so many people that are gifted. The only problem is they know that they're gifted. And when they use the gift that God has given them, they do it for their glory instead of for God's glory. They want a pat on the back. They want somebody to tell them how good they are at what they do. Folks, nobody is excluded from the call to be an ordinary vessel filled with the Spirit of God and be used of God. And there's no better way to invest your life and to use your gift so that God can get the joy to be used in God's church. I want you to take just a few minutes to prayerfully consider the opportunities of ministry that are available at Highland Park Baptist Church for you to use your gift. If you looked at the bulletin board out in the hallway, the labor of love is put up in the hallway. If you looked at all the different ways that people are using their gifts. Labor of Love has, committee has listed many, many ministries in this church where you can use the gift that God's given you. And there are going to be more and more ministries that will be added. If you sing, come see Tom. If you can teach, go and see our nominating committee. If you want to work with children, Go, go to those that are working in the children's ministry. If you want to work with the youth, go and see Ryan. People say, I don't have a gift. Or I don't know what my gift is. Folks, remember, every person who's ever been saved, filled with the as a gift. I thought they were going to do that this morning, but I guess the bad weather affected that. But Labor of Love Committee is going to be passing out a spiritual gift survey. Probably do that next week. May even do it Wednesday night. But I want you to take that home. I want you to pray about it, study over it. And I want you to ask God to show you what your gift is. And then once God shows you what your gift is, ask him, how can I use my gift in your church? And then next Sunday, we're going to have a commitment service. And we're going to have a time that we can all commit ourselves and our gifts to God to use what God has given us for the good of his church and for his glory.
And if every one of us would use our gifts, talents, and abilities for the glory of God, working together as one in the church. Folks, there's nothing, nothing that this church cannot do. Because God has not only given us the gift, but he's given us the power to use that gift so that he will be lifted up high and he will get the glory. Father, thank you for every gift that's in this church right now. Thank you for the many that are using their gifts for the good of your church and for your glory and for your honor. And Father, if you really want to be used of God, you've got to know what your gift is. I can remember arguing with God when God called me to be a minister, and I was just like Moses. I used every excuse that I could think of. Folks, there's no excuses. God's given you a gift. You need to use it. And God will empower you to use it. If you're here today and you're lost without Jesus, the first gift that he wants to give you is the gift of faith. You need to open your heart. Ask Jesus to come in, be Savior and Lord of your life. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins, give you eternal life. And then once you receive that gift of faith, He'll fill you with His Holy Spirit and empower you with a special gift to be used just for Him. I pray for those who are looking for a church home today. And this is where God has led you to worship and work and serve and fellowship. I pray you come this morning. I don't know what God's speaking to your heart this morning, but whatever the Spirit is saying just to you today, have the ears to hear and the heart to obey. Say yes to Jesus. Father, bless this time of invitation. And I just pray, Father, that you'd have the freedom to move about this place today. You'd have the freedom to move us, to do and to be all that you'd have us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's stand as we sing. If you need to come this morning, come, would you? Have I no